In my experience, spiritual awakening doesn't happen in a linear line where one phase happens after the next. I would say it's analogous to the DNA spiral. For some of us, we might go through certain stages again and again before progressing onto the next stage. And for other people, we might skip a stage altogether. Or we might have a combination of two stages at once. Anyway, just like our DNA is unique, our spiritual walk will be tailor-made to fit us differently. Although our paths might not be the same, I think there are common elements to all our walks. So in this video, I wanted to share with you the five spiritual awakening stages that I went through, and hopefully you'll see some similarities with your own. Stage number one, unconsciousness. At this stage, you're mostly unconscious, which means that you'll be operating life deeply within your ego. There isn't, um, there isn't enough space between you and your ego. So you think you are your thoughts and your emotions. You essentially don't have much control over yourself, so you can't help but be defensive. Be angry, be mean, be cynical, negative, self-destructive, and whatever. People at this stage feel like life happens to them rather than them creating their own life. And so at this stage, they might live life in a very reactive way. Any trauma that happens, they don't feel that they have control over. So they become the trauma, meaning that's their story. That's the story they'll be telling themselves and the story they'll be engaged in. And so they'll get angry, sad, hurt over and over as it plays out constantly in their head. At this stage, it'll be hard to see other people as they are. For example, a person I worked with a long time ago saw me as someone who can potentially take his job, even though I had no intention of doing that. Um, so what he would do is he'd snatch any job that came my way. Just like so, people who are unconscious engage with other people through the lens of their own perception and projection, rather than seeing others as they are. Stage 2. Ego death. Ego death is when there's a total breakdown of the ego or a total loss of the subjective self. For me, I went through an ego death where all the identity I had built up so far was wiped clean. I realized that all the labels that were supposedly me, such as, you know, my gender, age, race, my beliefs, none of that was real. Even my personality wasn't real. Any ideas I had about life, God, religion were all erased. You know, I honestly just felt like a pair of eyes floating in space, devoid of meaning. I have a whole video on this, so you can check it out if you want to know more in detail. Anyway, what results from the ego death is an internal space between the subjective self or the ego and the observer self. When you were unconscious, you couldn't feel your observer self. The ego is what you thought you were. When you go through an ego death, there's a separation that happens between you and the ego. So you start to understand that the ego is not you. The story you've been told of who you are is not you. And the story you're telling yourself is not you. And you start to become aware of the observer self in the background, the, you know, the part of you that observes and experiences life. Stage three, the search. This, uh, this phase is when you start to search for the quote-unquote the truth. When you're at this stage, you read um, spiritual books, seek out spiritual teachers, watch videos on spiritual ideas, try spiritual exercises such as meditation, writing, contemplation, praying, channeling, and etc. What drives you is that you want to learn what the truth is, who you really are, why you were born, what the meaning of life is, and who God is, and so on and so forth. For me, this phase came after my ego death. Because my identity was wiped clean, I started searching for who I really was in an effort to rebuild my identity. Who am I, really? What is God? What is the meaning of it all? I read spiritual books and self-development books insatiably, and I watched a lot of videos. Um, as things started making sense more and more, I started feeling light and feeling connected and high. Stage four, emergence of the authentic self. There will come a point where you can't pretend anymore or fake it anymore. 
This is the stage where your authentic self emerges. You know the self that you used to be when you were a kid before you were trained out of it? Well, that stage will emerge. Um, you'll find that um, you can no longer repress your voice. You'll find yourself having no tolerance for unbalanced relationships. And if you have a job that doesn't resonate, well, that'll probably go out of your life. For me, at this stage, I quit my corporate job because it became too painful for me to fake it anymore. I was so painfully aware that the job wasn't for me. So, you know, I just couldn't continue. I was also uprooted from my previous life. Literally, my house in LA caught on fire. Lifelong friends and family fell away, and years of isolation proceeded afterwards. But also, at this stage, I found my sole purpose. I have a video on that as well, so I'll link it here if you're interested. Anyways, this is the stage where old energy is leaving and new energy is coming into your life, into your body. So you might notice that you start purging out old emotional wounds or psychological trauma, even the most minute ones that you had forgotten. So there might be emotional roller coasters happening. You might also experience physical ascension symptoms because old energy is leaving the body and the body is being calibrated to the new energy. And with the new energy, you might notice that your intuitive abilities become stronger and you have multidimensional experiences like lucid dreams, premonitions, visions, and so many other things. Stage 5. Life of Alignment At this stage, you live a life of alignment where you're aligned with every part of you and every part of everything else. You live connected to all of yourself, your soul, your mind, your body. You have compassion for yourself and forgive your limitations. You start being the parent that you needed and start having unconditional love for yourself. And because you do this for yourself, you start doing it for others as well. You have compassion for others and forgive their limitations and understand that they can only be who they're being at the moment, even if they're not being kind. Not only are you connected with yourself and others, you become more and more connected with everything else. You realize you're connected to the trees, the plants, the animal, the air, the earth, the space, even the furniture in your house. And you're connected with the spiritual realm, so knowledge and wisdom opens up to you. You start understanding that there isn't a right and a wrong, or a higher or a lesser way of being. We're all playing our part and holding our space, benefiting each other and being the expression of God at every level. But you also see the darker side of things as well, but, you know, not in a cynical way, more in a compassionate way. In conclusion... I want to say that no one stage is superior to another stage. No matter what stage you're in, you are being God expressed. Even if you're in the first stage where you're unconscious, you're still God experiencing life. Also, I feel this so deeply, but spiritual awakening is not about reaching a certain destination and then we're done. You know, life continues on and on and maturity happens continuously, even after death, even beyond death. Anyway... Hope this helped. Tell me in the comments below which stage you think you're at. Thanks for shining your light exactly the way you were made to. Until next time, regards, Ray. Oh no.